Hello everyone and welcome to Realism Overhaul in maybe Kerbal Space Program 1.11. Maybe because technically Realism Overhaul is not released for KSP 1.11, it is only released for KSP 1.10, but I didn't really want it for KSP 1.10. I've been doing a stock career in uh, 1.11 and I've gotten used to that. I like the engineering mode and I want to use it. And so I wanted Realism Overhaul in 1.11. So I decided to see if it would work anyway, even though it's not officially released for 1.11. And so that's why we are here. So we're at Baikonur because first I'll be trying to launch one of Raider Nick's rockets because uh, he had asked me to test them out in 1.10. But I assume if they work in 1.11, it'll be fine anyway. And so we're at Baikonur and taking a look at the tracking station to make sure we are properly earthed and everything. And aside from Raider Nix mods, I have my own mods, of course, but not uh, other part mods just yet. Otherwise, it's just a baseline Realism Overhaul install, as I went over in the installing Realism Overhaul in 1.8.1 video. Uh, the process is basically the same. Uh, I of course, installed the mods manually, as I always do, uh, so I do not use CCAN. So by Knorr, all the other launch sites are there. Obviously, I was able to change the launch site using KSC Switcher from Cape Canaveral to here. And when we go to Cape Canaveral, we'll see Katniss Cape Canaveral also working just fine. Uh, I've got TAC Life Support. Of course, nothing is happening right now as far as that's concerned. I haven't launched anything yet. So we are going to find out together whether everything is intact. Well, I figure the first thing we ought to launch is Sputnik. That seems basic. And I've got a KOS and I've got it on archive per usual. So edit Sputnik 1. And oh, I didn't don't have it on archive. I thought I had set that. It's in the difficulty settings. You have to tell KOS to start on archive. I thought I'd done that, maybe I hadn't. And I'm gonna copy my old KOS script and see if it works. So it's a very old script, so it doesn't have some of the better features I've got in my newer scripts. Okay. Oh, it doesn't like SAS on. Uh, nowadays, whenever you put SAS on, it gives this warning. I dislike that intensely because as far as I'm concerned, if I want SAS on, I can have SAS on without having that stupid message, or at least they should have an option to turn it off in the difficulty settings. Sometimes I want SAS on, okay? I know it fights with the KOS script. Sometimes it needs to fight with the KOS script. Anyway, we are off. The plumes are what they are. I don't have Blizzy's toolbar, so I think I can't actually see the smoke screen settings. I suspect we we're on much less than the particle count that I would like. Sort of a classic look to it uh, in those clouds. The color of it was very like some 50s film or something. But yeah, I think it's on like a thousand particles or something and we need way more considering all the nozzles at the bottom of this rocket. So I think one is actually pretty hard to launch accurately because it is just a one and a half stage thing. It's not got the core and boosters, but no upper stage. Which means it gets to pretty high thrust to weight ratios and the script has to deal with those properly. Well, at least the particle count doesn't make the plume look too bad here. This is the part I like real plume for and which at least the screenshots of Waterfall do not make me feel like Waterfall has, has the flare going out in quite this fiery way that some, especially kerosene oxygen engines, tend to have it. For other engines, of course, it's not like this, but kerosene oxygen does a lot of this. Oh, it rolled for some reason. I don't know why it rolled. Oh, it's rolling again. Yeah, I don't know why it's rolling like that, but okay. Hopefully it knows. We can see the G-forces right now. Okay, off go the boosters. Seems nominal so far. Uh, some little twitchiness with the verniers though. 
real wobble. That's why I used I used SAS4. And then it gets irritated. But SAS stops the wobble, roll wobble. Yeah, well, stop telling me. It's fine. <laughs> stop! It's fine! Let it go. Stop it. My script is designed so that it can do this. It's not a problem. I mean, it's it's really designed so that the it it's not they're not fighting. They're just working together in seamless harmony. They has got a target pitch, it seemed at the target pitch. It's where it ought to be. That time to lap laps this is long though. I I don't think this is working out quite right. So I'll have to review the script, but overall the rocket did fine. It's not the rocket's fault. KOS needs to go away. Um, so yeah, not the rocket's fault, but Sputnik didn't quite make it. It's in a really high elongated trajectory that will end up back in the atmosphere immediately. But yeah, uh, that's the script's fault. Otherwise, the rocket went fine and the game is working fine. We are visibly over real solar system. It looks a lot like it does in 1.8.1. So, well, the thing is, in 1.8.1 we have that coastline problem. And from Baikonur we can't check that out. So I really need to go over to Cape Canaveral to see how the coastlines look here in 1.11. Maybe they're fixed, maybe they're not. Let's find out. Okay, I decided to go with Pioneer 6 as our next test. A sufficiently different kind of rocket. And probably we're not on archive still because I didn't change it. All right, Pioneer 6. And this one is a more up-to-date version of my launch scripts, so hopefully it'll perform better. There are basically two different types of my launch script. There was a phase where I fixed a whole bunch of things, and some of the launch scripts don't have those fixes, and some do. So, yeah, we will see how this one works. This Sputnik 1 one did not have those fixes. This one still starts off with SAS on though. I'll, uh, I'm betting it's the Vernier. Ooh, uh, it might be the fact that it's got a thrust weight ratio that's super duper. But yeah, usually the times when I have I tell it to have SAS on is to stop the Vernier wiggle. Otherwise, everything else works just fine. <laughs> At least according to the pitch that it wants to set. Now if it rips itself apart, I'll turn on SAS again to see if that helps. Uh, I think we might need to though. It's tough, that, uh, the thrust weight ratio on this is crazy. So yeah, it looks like the coastlines are fixed in this version. But one thing that the newer version of the launch script has is it's told to uh, point at prograde when the dynamic pressure is really high. That's some. That's a new sort of add-on to the launch script. So that does save this from ripping itself apart when the the thrust to weight ratio is really high. Boom is looking good actually. Now well, here we go with the G forces again. Lots and lots of G forces. Wow, past 10, 11, okay. Now was a quick changeover. Did a little AJ-10, old style AJ-10. I don't know when exactly they would have dumped the fairings. A lot of old systems, they just waited until orbit, but... I think I'll just manually dump them now. It's a big fairing. Maybe it's that's wrong and I should have waited. Well, while I'm here, let's check whether the animation works. Extended antennae. Seems nominal. And actually, this version of the AJ-10 might have more ignitions, or maybe not. It doesn't have a ignition indication here. That might be a flaw. I don't know, I'm, I'm looking out for things where it might not be 
you know, realism overhaul might not be safe for this version of KSP. We've got all the other information, including the feed pressure being okay and everything. But normally it'd say, you know, ignitions left zero if there were zero ignitions left. So I don't know how many ignitions this has right now. Okay, and it is satisfied with orbit. So that's good. Well, while I can, let me check whether I can reignite it. Let's say it's on and... Yes, this does have another ignition, but it didn't want to tell us about it. Uh, this UI has changed. I mean, the UI has changed, but I think it was like this in 1.10 as well. I'm not sure. So, yeah. And go. Lots of G-forces per usual. Okay, well. Separate. Did it actually free that thing? Hmm. Nope. It's oh, I've got, I don't have persistent rotation in right now. Shoot. Okay. Oh no, it's floating away now. Okay, okay, okay. Crisis averted. It's floating away. All right. Just fooled by it for a sec there. Okay, so this is fine. This is fine. Everything seems to be nominal. We've got the really long range antenna rating. There's energy flow. All right. Okay, well, it's been so far so good as far as launches are concerned. And really, I don't anticipate anything else weird going on if the launch works. But maybe I'm not thinking ahead far enough. But yep, so far so good for Realism Overhaul in 1.11. And here I've got one of mine, the Lex on a Raptor 9 rocket, or a Unix rocket, as another name for it. And well, I think they've tightened up the Smart ASS thing. It used to be physically a little bit bigger. Uh, I don't have my custom windows right now. I wonder if, yeah, they sort of tightened up the format of it. Anyway. So we're, I'm just going to try out this one and see if it works. And if it does, I will be up. Oh, we definitely don't want the launch clamp staging at the same time. I'll be reasonably satisfied that things are working enough for me to proceed in this version of KSP with realism overhaul. So ignition and launch Wow, uh, really rocked on the clamps. huh? Uh, I set these raptors to be fast igniting because of the necessities of landing, of course. And of course, by now everybody knows that I can't configure a plume to save my life, so... Yep. Let me just check that the animation on these flaps works. Yep, that seems to work fine. Very simple things. A little black spot there for some reason. Apparently we've got a black hole. That might... Oh, is that the monolith? No, it's sort of moving... No, I don't know. Maybe it's the monolith now. It's flying or something. I don't know what that is. Seems to be fading a bit though. Nothing on this side. We've got a pet black hole, everyone. Well, it's better than some of the other artifacting that we got in 1.8.1, so... I will accept the little black hole. If it's still there, it's still there. Well, it's a little bit indistinct there. If it's still there. We'll reserve fuel for a presumed recovery of the first stage. And really, that ought to be enough. We're not carrying any payload right now, anyway. So, yeah, we're really light. We've got lots of propellants. Oh, the delta V reading is very clearly not right here. Oh, this is uh, the number of ignitions here this time. You can see the stats for this Raptor vacuum. Well, as usual, the stock delta V reading is not reliable for realism overhaul. But that's no nothing new. Mechjab seems to be reading the Delta V just fine, as well as the burn times. 
I should put crew here to verify the food, water, and oxygen consumption, I suppose. I'm gonna just check the animation on the hatch here. That seems fine. We have the decks in there. Well, while we're waiting, I should probably check on the other planets briefly, huh? I mean, you never know. Earth might look fine, but maybe uh, the rest of the stuff is weird. Well, at least from this point of view, the moon looks fine. Mercury is looking very Mercury-like. Also, much like the moon. I've got RSS visual enhancements, of course, and it still appears to be working. Venus is cloudy. Well, uh, Mars is Mars. I, I'm not too sure if it should have some sort of haze or something, but, you know, a trivial amount of atmosphere. Can't tell if it's missing that or not, but it's looking like Mars anyway. Jupiter. I'm just gonna go to the main planets. Jupiter's looking Jupiter. Oh, I'll check Io. Io is definitely Io. Does Saturn have rings? It does have rings. And is it a little bit squished? I don't think it's properly squished though. It's not squished. I remember there was a version of real solar system where it was properly squished. Uranus has its inclination. I mean it's axial tilt, sorry. Neptune very blue, and with Triton. And last but certainly not least, Pluto. We don't have any of the other ones though. And only Sharon slash Karen. And Pluto's texture. Well, it could do some work. And we are making orbit shut down. Okay, yeah, everything seems to be fine. Um, re-entry heat might be something else, but I'm not set up to test that with this vehicle. So, I'll do further testing, but if somebody knows a good reason why we can't use Realism Overhaul in 1.11, please tell me. I, uh, I may be missing something, but it seems alright to me so far. Uh, but, yep, I will... It might be that, like, for my RP2000 development, I'll have to migrate into KSV 1.11. I don't think there's any point making everything for 1.8.1 if it works well enough here. The At least the engineering system will make me happy, so uh, we'll see. We'll see how that all goes. I'll continue testing this version. And the install process is the same as for 1.8.1. You just uh, go to the realism overhaul thread and to remind yourself of what the requirements for realism overall are, advanced jet engines, fair mirror space, module manager comes with most things, so you don't have to install that separately. Same with modular flight integrator and solver engines, those come with the other mods. Um, Coral joint reinforcement, uh, real shoots, real fuels, community resource pack, real heat, real plume, and smoke screen. And that's and then, of course, Realism Overhaul, the mod itself, plus Real Solar System, presumably you want to use it with that. And then you're all set. And, uh, of course, there's also the GitHub page for the Realism Overhaul mods. So, yep. I don't think I'll be, unless for some compelling reason somebody wants me to do a whole video on how to install the darn thing again. I don't think there's any need for that because it was rather easy. I think it was easier in one point for one, this 1.11 install than it was for 1.8.1. So you do have to convene, uh, try and get the latest version of everything, of course. Uh, some, some of the mods might be for 1.10 instead of 1.11. I think there was one that was... Uh, no, I think that was... I don't think there was a 1.9. I forget. But yeah. You have to watch out, try and get the most recent mods possible. But, yep, that's what I did, and this is how it turned out. So, good luck. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.